Hey everyone, it's Elisa from Inside the Photo Box and Photo Box Designs here to unpackage these little bag toppers for Valentine's Day. Perfect little toppers to place on top of any kind of Ziploc or, or treats bag. Um, you staple them right on and you can send them off with your kids or your clients can do the same with their kids for Valentine's Day. So here we go. This is the bundle pack. You can choose to buy them separately or you can buy all six uh, bag toppers all together in this bundle pack. What you'll see here when you open up the bundle pack is you'll see top choices and bottom choices, a bottom fold layer, top fold line, gray background. So basically what that means is that the top choices are the top ones up here. The bottom choices are the bottom ones down here. The top fold line and the bottom fold line, these are just little guidelines for you. Uh, when you print, after you print, you'll have these lines still just kind of just to show you like where um, where you're, uh, you're going to be folding. Also, if you decide to resize any of the text here, you can do so and you'll still know basically where the center is. So let's take a look at each one. Now, we, what you have here is you have loads of hugs. Under that, you have sweet treat, a sweet Valentine treat. And then you have be mine little bear and his little bees. And those are your top three choices. And then in the bottom, you have bottom choices. Honey bee, honey bee mine. You have uh, I dig being your friend and you have cool, your cool Valentine. So with this cute little penguin. So those are the three choices on the bottom. You can print these all at eight and a half by 11. And, um, and then you can cut them out on your own. So Basically, it's, it's made so that you will be cutting around the border and then you will fold them on your own after you have completed. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of different things that you could do with this template. And then if you choose, you could stay with me till the very end and I'm going to demonstrate importing and using the template. But let's look at some of the top choices. I'm going to open up loads of hugs. And when you open up that folder, you'll see here the text for loads of hugs. You'll see also that although it is not editable, meaning that you don't have the font and you can't just change the text, you can't just click on here and change the text, you can resize it if you like. So you would just press, I'm, I'm on the layer here, I'm going to press Command T and I can resize it, I can move it. Of course, why would I, I wouldn't want to move it here because that's where the fold line is. But you could always just resize it. Now I'm using Photoshop CC 2020. So when I resize, I do not need to use my shift key if I want to keep my aspect ratio, which is different than the older versions. However, if you want to change the aspect ratio, let's say you just want to make it wider, but you don't want to make it taller, you can hold your shift key down. And that's how that works. So um, you can also, you'll see there's a little thing for little hearts. <clears throat> you can click them all on and off. You can click on and off the truck. Everything is editable. Everything is resizable. Why did I do that? Well, because this template is made so the background is about seven and a half inches wide to go, uh, to, go to fit nicely over a uh, bag that has a seven and a half inch wide opening but you might choose a bag that has a shorter or longer opening. And I'm going to show you how you can change the size of the background so to fit your bag needs. So again, here's the trucks. Then you have your clipping masks. Okay. These are your clipping masks. These are, this is where you're going to place your images and clip them to the mask. You have again, your to and your from. So, uh, they are not editable, but they are resizable. Here's your background layer. Okay, I'm shutting off my background layer. What you're actually just seeing now is the other templates. So take a look here. I can shut those off. You've got your background layer. Now the, you'll see the background layer has an effects color overlay. So, and then a gradient overlay. So I can, um, you can easily change the color of the background if you like. Just, you can take the gradient off and make it white. You can click on color overlay. And if you feel like changing it to uh, just pink. You can do that too because I had it set to just plain pink. You could turn off the color overlay and keep the gradient or you can go in and change the background color if you want to. It's just as easy as doing that. 
anything you want. It makes it, it made it very easy for you to change the backgrounds of all of these. Okay, so I have a color and I have a gradient. And um, so that's basically one of the templates out of the choices. They're all pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same idea. I want to just show you now. You'll see here, if you want to change the size of the background to make it a little bit larger, because maybe the opening of your bag is larger, you have two choices. You can grab and highlight the whole folder that says top choices and bottom choices. So I would, I'm going to uh, press top choices. I'm now I'm going to press my command button. I'm on a Mac and that also now highlights my bottom choices and you'll see that everything, if I click those off, shuts off almost everything in this template. Now I'm going to press command T and I'm going to use my transformation tool to transform all of the things inside both of these templates at the same time. So I don't think I want to change. I don't want to make these taller than they are. I just want to maybe make them a little bit wider. I'm going to use my hold down my shift key because I, again, I'm in Photoshop CC 2020. So I do want to change my aspect ratio I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm just going to pull. And yeah, it changes the, it also changes the, the, uh, the clip art and the text a little too, stretches it out. Now, if that doesn't bother you, then that, that would work out fine. If you, let's say your bag is a little bit smaller, you can just shrink everything to the size that you need it to be. Um, but let's say you don't want to touch the clip art necessarily, or you want to move the clip art and you just want to do the background layer. Well, I would go into, if we have a loads of hugs open, I'm going to go directly into the background, press command T, hold it down my shift button and just pull out my background a little because maybe that's all I really needed was just a little bit more width. And I'm happy with the size of the, uh, the placement of the objects. And, and you can just do it that way. It's just as simple. So it's very easy to change the size of what you're going to cut out. So what I need you to do is to make sure that the size is correct before you go into some kind of mass print. I would say do a test run, test one of these templates out, even before you place anything inside of it. Um, before you place anything inside, I would definitely do a test run. Oh, and the other thing I'm thinking about now is I don't have any children in here. So if I do the first thing, if I hold down the entire top choice and bottom choice and I use the command T and I stretch a little bit, I might be stretching my kids inside these pictures a little too much. Um, and I might choose to not do that but to just go with my second choice, which is just changing the background size. So that's really entirely up to you on how you want to do it. Everything here can be resized. Everything here can be changed. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is show you uh, one more thing. Other people, some people have asked. So now if you look in image, image size, you'll see that it's set for eight and a half by 11. This just makes it easy for you to be able to calculate the size in case you need to resize these borders. However, sometimes a weird thing happens with just, I only really only find it with box templates. Some, for some reason, when we're inputting, inserting a very large file of um, a person that has been cropped severely because it's a box and we have to crop around there, crop around the boxes and then we place it into a smaller box inside our template it it pixelates the picture for some reason the workaround that we've had for this and this really is just affects mostly box images um, or small or the box type uh, images like this so the workaround we've had is sometimes we will go into image image size and then you can increase the size of the whole, actually we'll do canvas, image canvas size, and um, you can increase the size of the entire template. So right now it's eight and a half by 11. Maybe I want to make it um, 12. Let's see. Oops. Make it 12 by 
eight and a half by 11. So it's actually, uh, let's go back, go to image, do it either way, really image, image size. So I want to change it from eight and a half to 11 to 12. And now it's going to automatically upsize it for me, 12 to 15.529. Basically, I'm really just increasing the size of the template, but the template can still be, I did not increase the aspect ratio of this template. So this template can still be printed in an eight and a half by 11 print size. It doesn't change anything. The only thing it changed was the, basically the amount of pixels and how large this template is now. But the print size can still be eight and a half by 11. Okay, I just wanted to show you that. I'm gonna go backwards. <clears throat> now I'm gonna show you how to import pictures. So now you can do it one of two ways. You could do it the way you would do it with a normal uh, box template, which is if you already have, let's say, um, some images open from Lightroom into Photoshop and you have them in another file in Photoshop, which I don't for this actual option. You can just bring them into this template just how you would have with a typical box template. Maybe just, um, but I'm gonna show you, I'm going to place embedded I'm going to take just a, a regular photo and I'm going to place it in. Now, as you can see, it's really too, way too big for any of the templates. And I'm going to put it into this loads of love and I'm going to kind of move it around and I'm going to, now I'm not holding my shift key down because I'm using Photoshop CC 2020 and therefore it's not changing my aspect ratio. Now, <clears throat> I did something silly, which was I did not open up the template that I'm actually in. So I'm in Loads of Love, I'm gonna open up Loads of Love, I'm gonna open up the clipping masks. I like to place this photo into the left clipping mask. So now I've taken that photo, dragged it on top of the left clipping mask, I'm going to right click on it, create clipping mask, and now I've clipped this picture in. Now I'd like to put a second picture in. I'm in my move tool. This time I'm just going to click right on this clipping mask. It actually then highlights the right mask for me immediately. Say place embedded. And I'm gonna place another cute little picture into my template. I'm going to move it up, turn it, And press the check mark, right click, create clipping mask. And voila, my loads of love has now been placed in. Here's a neat thing you can do if you want to while clicking on the uh, while clicking on the clipping mask, you can right click on it, click blending options, and you can add a stroke. That's the little line that goes around the box. If that makes you happy, strokes are fun. They're always a late, nice little finishing touch. So you just change the color. So maybe I want my color of my stroke to be, uh, to match the text. Press okay. Okay. Now I have a nice little stroke around this picture and I would like to repeat that stroke. I can do the same thing with the right side, just how I did it. Or I can stay highlighted on my left and I can hold I'm on my, I'm on a Mac. I'm pressing my option key. And while I do that, I'm taking the effect I'm, and I'm dragging the effect to the right side, to the right. Oops. Try it again. Dragging it to the right. Nope. Not working. I'm going to try it one more time. Actually, I think it was, uh, nope, not working again. All right. Well, this is, I'm going to just step back. Okay, I'm on the left. And okay, it worked this time. So all I did was I held down my option key, I grabbed the effect, and I dragged it down to the right uh, clipping mask, let go, and it copied it. It didn't move it, it copied it. So now I have the effects on both clipping masks. And uh, that's a nice little finishing touch. And you can change that. You can also, if you really want to, 
You can do some other cool stuff. You can go into your effects again, maybe add a drop shadow if you feel like it. You can maybe add a pattern overlay. Nope, you don't want to do that. <laughs> you can play around with these blending options. They're just and these um these effects. It's it's a lot of fun. So okay, so that's how I would load up loads of hugs. Now I'm gonna go into Honey Be Mine. And Honey Be Mine is in the bottom choices. Just to make it easier, I color coded. Opening up Honey Be Mine. I'm opening up the clipping mask. I'm clicking on the left clicking mask. <clears throat> which would be this one. And I'm going to say file, place embedded. Now, um, I just happen to have these little bear pictures around, so I'm just going to use them because they're kind of fun. These are little bears that I took a while ago. Um, actually, a long time ago when I first started, they were my test models, my very first test models. So again, I'm going to take this. This is how I would input a little square. And... I'm going to right click, create clipping mask, and now he's clipped in, she's clipped in. And I'm gonna press Command T, and I'm going to resize this again, and just leave it like that. Now, you can choose to just leave the boxes in just as is, just as how you see it here, or you can <clears throat> um, you can cut the legs out. And I have another video that shows you more explicitly how you could go ahead and cut the legs out so they would actually hang over if you wanted to uh, with clipping masks. So you just have to refer back to um, another video that has more instruction on how to use clipping masks and cut out objects and let them hang over using clipping masks. So that's how I would fill up a template. And then when I'm done, I would save it, I would export it, and print. Okay, and uh, I think that's it. So thank you all for watching, and uh, hope you have a wonderful day.